I'm going to try to keep recording these and I'm going to try to manage and organize the files a little bit better. Um, and yeah, if you subscribe on Twitch, you get access um, a little behind, like a month behind. But you guys should have, subscribers should have gotten at least a link to this. So there's like three issues, um, little like monthly file tips, like Houdini gems. Um, and then I also set up a Patreon to mirror this content. So if people don't want to use Twitch or don't want to log on or whatever, um, they can also access this stuff. And I'm in the process of, of working on some new cool stuff for that as well. It's been easy for me to kind of chip away at this stuff when I just have like 15 minutes of free time during the day or something like that. It's, it's a little bit less of a uh, time block than streaming. So yeah, I've been working on this rose. Let me see, where did it go? Uh, working on the shading a little bit. Now, I've been trying to get it like rigged up with, with vellum and all that stuff. Um, where did it go? Oof, I don't think that one's gonna work. So yeah, I think it's, this is like the latest one here. <laughs> Patreon has been helpful. Yeah, so it should be, if, if you're a Twitch subscriber, feel free to, to message me or do the whisper or whatever in, in that. And I can give you a link. Um, so both of those, where did this one go? Both of those content feeds, like if, if you subscribe, you'll get a history or you should be able to back navigate to the, the full uh, repository or whatever of, of stuff. So yeah, it's just like little snippets of code, hip files, um, cool little tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get back into the streams and maybe even do some, like a walkthrough or a breakdown of some of these files would be pretty cool uh, to kind of be like a companion to this stuff. Um, I try to organize stuff pretty cleanly but a lot of the time it can still get like, I don't know, it's sometimes just getting like the, the POV <laughs> first person view of, of the file is a little bit helpful as well. Uh, yeah, so if you're, you've been a Twitch subscriber and you haven't gotten these um, messages or the, the links to the newsletter, feel free to reach out. Um, so yeah, this is the kind of work in progress or whatever, the, the simulation. Um, I've been trying to add like the cloth or the vellum. Um, I still need to, to work on the shading of this stuff a little bit. I'm hopefully gonna add some like time ramps and uh, I have like this wind, like this noise or whatever uh, going through it. It's, it's a little wonky in some places or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the things that I'm hoping to, to add into the uh, subscriber, Patreon or Twitch bonus content as well. This one has been super difficult to get with uh, collisions and and uh, penetrations or whatever and like all that stuff. But yeah, I've been, I'm using Kinefx to do like the, the rig or the skeleton of everything. Um, and then pumping that through Vellum using like the pin uh, target to animation or whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to polish it up a little bit more. Um, get it looking a little bit better but yeah i'm hoping to, to finish it pretty soon morning streams schedule yeah <laughs> good to see you vegan nuts it's uh it's, i don't have a set schedule right now i just had some free time this morning been meaning to get back into it so i just wanted to to do the, the plunge <laughs> so yeah we'll get uh we'll get going now um, just planning to do it somewhat typical. You guys kind of know the drill, um, cool zone, cool zone Friday. So I haven't been doing this that recently. Um, just making kind of like Instagram, or I guess it's called NFT art now. Uh, just this typical kind of like, uh, animations or still frames or whatever. So just trying to come up with something cool was doing these uh, at the start of the year or whatever, the somewhat 
new style or whatever for me. Um, but yeah, just playing around, coming up with, with cool stuff. And we do have the file share. Um, I think this command should still work. If you do exclamation mark hip in the chat, um, you can go to this link. And this will explain to you, uh, we have this shelf tools set up or whatever to, to grab the file or the Houdini scene in so you can follow along as I'm uh, working or whatever. That's a pretty cool one. Um, so yeah, once I save this, I'll just put it in the stream, get a new 2021. Oh my God. <laughs> Player two, yeah, a courtesy of Player two, this amazing car model. This is a, I think at the, around New Year's or the, it's a, a streaming series we did last year that was really fun. We did like the pavement shader, the uh, tire burnout simulation, um, a bunch of different portions. I think it took me like, I don't know, it was like 20, 30 hours live on, on stream. I got uh, distracted and uh but just like dialed in and spend a lot of time on details or whatever. I would spend like one, one stream just working on like a shader and kind of a waste of time or whatever, but it, it was a fun process. Um, but yeah, player two, thank you very much for the, the amazing uh, Lamborghini Countach model. Maybe we'll go back and, and revisit that and do like a uh, automotive, another automotive uh, shader session or something like that, it could be fun. We'll put this, is this January, February, March, April, is it five, seven. Um, so I'm planning to do something with vellum today. So I'll just call this like vellum, um, proof. So this is going to be an empty file, but if I do this button here, um, this puts a link to the, the file that I have right now in here, and then these shelf tools that I was doing earlier. Um, these are more convenient ways where if you like run this code, basically you'll pull in, like if I do fetch latest, you can see it just pulled in the geo2 node. So it will just grab like my working nodes and shove them right into your scene. So instead of like opening a new file every one or two minutes or whatever, like it's just a little bit maybe more convenient or whatever. But we'll, we'll get going. Um, so yeah, I'll just do a sphere. Lokesh, yeah, I've been doing somewhat well, busy, busy with, uh, with work, with stuff with Apple. They, they were doing like a marketing uh, campaign thing that was like a big push. Um, so it's just hard for me to find like big blocks of time to, to do streaming. Integrate these backgrounds with the Insta post. Looks seamless. Tried the background, DXR is not as sharp. Um, so I was kind of cheating. I was just doing this HD, I think HDRI Haven. Um, this website as well is on my, I guess I, I, I made a new link or whatever. So on my website here, resources, I think if you do, I forget. Resources? Okay, yeah. So you get a link to that, this if you just do exclamation mark resources in the chat. Um, HDRI Haven is right there, yeah. So this, this one was a really good resource I found that, um, and they have a Patreon as well that you can you do to uh, support them. They do amazing work. So these, they come with this tone mapped JPEG, which is really nice. So like usually if you download the HDRI, um, it's a, like linear light space or whatever, and the sun will be blown out and all that stuff. So it doesn't look as good if you use it in the background of your uh, renders or, or animations. So you can use this tone mapped uh, JPEG. Let me see if it, it's probably just gonna ask me to download it or whatever. Um, and it's like you, you want the linear light one to be actually illuminating your scene, but for a background or whatever, like then you don't have to uh, tone map it or, or, or manage the color yourself. 
Yes, I'm recording. I think so. <laughs> so the stream will be available on YouTube. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to organize the files a little bit better as well. Yeah, the streaming will be saved to Fred. Yes. Um, so Twitch does the VOD thing for like 45 days, but I'm trying to get back into the, the YouTube, back on the stream, back on the log plume. So uh, let's just do vellum configure cloth. And I just switched this to polygon. So you wanna make sure like primitive, this is like just one entity. It's not really a mesh or anything like that. It's like a special object. You just wanna do polygon. So we have like triangles or quads and this will set up the constraints. Instagram and Twitter links are broken. <laughs> Thank you for that broken robot art. Yeah, I've been trying to go through, I, I don't think I, I updated them all, but I was I, I, I got bored of my old handles or whatever. Um, yeah, the VODs only exist for 45 days. I think, um, I don't know if I would, if I ever get like a partner level or status or something like that, but um, For the time being, I'm planning just to, to keep going with, with uh, YouTube for a more permanent like archive of everything. Uh, the stuff for Apple, I think it's, I, I can't talk about it too much because it's a lot of like NDA stuff. Um, it was like a lot of product stuff that was in their new campaign launch. You usually go to the website. Um, a little bit of, of uh, phone stuff and a little bit of iMac stuff was like the main new things. I guess they did this AirTag as well. Um, but yeah, they do. I can't really talk about too much in specific, but they have a whole internal marketing department and they work as well with other vendors. Um, so they just need tons of help doing like shading, animation, rigging and, and tons of stuff like that. So much to tell. <laughs> I'm looking for Steve GH. I, I feel like right when I ended or got too busy with uh, streaming, his 3090 was coming and I never got to hear about how, what a beast it was. <laughs> but yeah, it's good to be back. Good to see everyone. Um, we have this cloth set up and then we can just do a vellum solver, just this simple solver. Ooh, boom. Um, yeah, and then this other input here is for collisions. So like, just a quick review here. Um, you can put it in either way. This is just like pumping it through, like nothing is happening to the collisions there. Um, but yeah, if you wanted this thing to be like inside of a box, I think we could do um, there. It's kind of inside of it. Um, if we increase this divisions, maybe the bend, um, bend and stretch, if we just decrease that, then we could get it probably crumpling. Ooh, maybe not as low with the bend. Don't want it to uh, completely crumple up or whatever. Uh, 3090. Must not be founders if it's if it has a water block, or you're getting that extra to add with the blower. Some of the 3090 models get uh, there's like an entire <laughs> size of a shoebox or something just by itself. Okay, so yeah, you can do this stuff with the box. I don't know if it looks at the normals. Like sometimes I feel like maybe if you reverse it, it's like an old thing you had to do sometimes with the particles just to get it like inside out or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna do the collision right now. I just wanna work with this ball by itself. So we'll turn off gravity, boom, nothing's going on. And one of the really cool things you can do with vellum is working with these constraints. So what I'll do is put down a null, boom. And then this, you could just use the display flag here to, to look at just the constraints. Get a 
Buckminster Fuller experience. And we set like the rest length at four, for example. Whoa. <laughs> it wants all the edges to be four times as long, which is really cool. But I feel like it's not as stable if you try to go like from one to four. If you try to go from like one to 0.5, it's a little bit more stable or whatever. Cause like you, you run out of like density in your mesh or you just run out of resolution. You don't have as much uh, detail to work with once you expand it out. Um, let me get that out of here. We have a wrangle and if we go into primitives, then we can modify, we'll just bring up the spreadsheet, geometry spreadsheet, and look at the primitives. So all of these settings, let me just pin this for a second. All of these settings like rest length scale, rest length here, these actually get set and then assigned or, or added to geometry attributes. So if I do F at rest length, equals, or usually I'll multiply it, so times equals 2.0. It should make everything two times as, as big. Whoa. <laughs> so the cool thing about doing this is we can use a noise, or we can do like variable um, lengths or density or stuff like that. So I'll just do this O noise and we'll um, use the, the position there. So if I control click and then look at the rest length, this visualizer, you can see it's, a bit, it's variable or it's changing. It's like different lengths over the surface. Goran Jan, I'm back. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get back into the habit of everything. Oof. So this, because um, we're multiplying, we have like some negative numbers here or something that's like, usually when you multiply something, you want to be going from like 1 to 1 1.5 or something. So it's like not going to make it any smaller. So we'll do fit and remap this from negative 0 0.2 to the, from the maximum range of 0 0.2 and then we'll fit it to the new range of one minimum of one and maximum of 1.2 so just grab some of the areas and make them slightly bigger Geronimo <laughs> how's it going so sometimes I'll just use these color nodes as well um, instead of like the visualizer you do things with a color, we'll set this to ramp, and we want to look at the rest length. Should work. Did I do something wrong? I don't know about this. Sometimes what I'll do, if this color is kind of whacked out, um, you can do it all in one here. So just set the color from that attribute that I just said. Might be something with this, just the way that I think, cause they're, they're overlapping each other or something like that. It might just be a viewport uh, issue. So I just, I'm not gonna do that right now. But we can see if we play it, we get an interesting just some edges are getting bigger than others. So 
so let's do um, a higher range here. Yeah, I'll be trying to get back on, on Discord as well, back into the party there. Um, looks like my bot is still working. <laughs> I'm really far behind on, on DMs and stuff like that. So I'll try to get, to get back into that. Uh, but yeah, so if you're on Discord, um, you do exclamation mark Discord as well, and you'll get a link or an invitation uh, to that. So that's like another component of this good community of people there. Uh, just giving help or ideas or, or stuff like that. Your invitation awaits. <laughs> you are invitation? Oh, okay, I, I do see. I made a grammar error. <laughs> I am an invitation. Okay, so do... Uh, I'm trying to get like a, a lower... Um, smaller amount of things to expand. So it's kind of more like bubbles. Um, we might even need more detail. Ooh. The gang is back. <laughs> and then I'll do another constraint and can put this up here. I'm, this doesn't have anything to do with the the flower, um, Edvino. This is like showing it a little bit earlier. This is just a fun. I'm just kind of taking a break from that. I've been working on it uh, just when I have free time or whatever. It's a little too complicated, I think, to go over on stream. It's a lot of. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm just tr trying to do something simple. Okay, so I added another constraint, and then this one I'm gonna set it to pressure. So that, I feel like does a better job um, making it feel like it's full of air. If you set the rest length scale on the pressure, this is like trying to pump it, blow it outwards basically. Like if you're inflating a, a ball or a basketball or something like that. Um, the pressure constraint as well, you have to be a little bit careful. It's, uh, it doesn't create a bunch of constraints for each edge, or it doesn't make a bunch of primitives for each edge. If you look here, um, you go over to type, there it is at the bottom. So it's just like a single, it might just be in the middle somewhere. Um, you can't adjust the pressure per, per edge. You can do it like per connected piece, if that makes sense. So that's why I'm working with both of these uh, like this. So this is how it does define pieces from connectivity and all of that. Parameters for the vellum constraints. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you want to go over all of them, but if you just look at these parameters here, some of these will get assigned to the constraints. So like um, they'll get based off of type bend. You see here we have uh, output group, there's stretch and, and bend. So when you look at them over here, type, and then they all just have stiffness. So stiffness and stiffness, damping and, and so on. Um, so usually I'll, I'll use these vellum constraints nodes to, to set them up initially and then look at what we have to work with. And then if you want to modify them like per, per edge or, or uniquely, you can do it like that. All right. Let's just go down a little bit more. I'm gonna try maybe doing this inside of the uh, solver. So 
So just double click and do uh, wrangle, geometry wrangle. Um, plug it in like that. And again, we would want to move this to primitives. You look tired. <laughs> it's early in the morning. Just, I was still waking up. And then uh, constraint geometry for the, this is one thing you have to be careful about with vellum. So if you look here at the vellum object, you can see that there's uh, the geometry itself, which is like the faces. And then there's this constraint geometry and this is the actual uh, constraints. So that's, that's how you know to move that there. Yeah, it's, <laughs> let's, let me see here. It's, uh, so at the time, I guess I just have, it's, eight, it's a nine, 9 a.m. So it's still, <laughs> still waking up, yeah. All right. So the same code I was doing up here, I think we can do it here. The reason I was doing it like that um, is because this will update and it will keep updating. So it keeps, may, this is kind of like 10% um, or 110%, 1.1. So this is like every frame or every sub step. I didn't see the ocean sim. I haven't, I haven't had a chance, uh, like, <laughs> I just opened up Discord for a while, uh, but yeah, I need to get back into to the swing of things with that. So basically every frame, we're, we're uh, expanding these certain constraints. We'll do another um, file share. We're just doing some, some stuff, so if you uh, missed any of these little options you get caught up with that oh wow this is amazing foam just like 500 gigabytes of, <laughs> of particles and and volumes <laughs> four terabytes but yeah the, the ocean shading in this looks amazing Yeah, I really like the lens uh, flares, like little glints and stuff like that. Yeah, the loop, making loops, seamless loops or whatever is uh, super, <laughs> super frustrating. But when you, when you do it right, it, it really makes it like mesmerizing. All right, so we'll do, um, One thing you have to be a little worried about is like, as I'm blowing up these constraints, you can see that they're moving around. So every frame, when it looks up in the noise pattern, it will get a different result and like it won't be stuck necessarily. So to do that, we want to rest position on these constraints. So we could just do that with a wrangle and go to primitives again. And I'm just gonna make a rest attribute and copy the position into that. So usually you don't store position on edges, um, but for constraints, you might wanna do it. And basically the, the centroid or the, the center of each edge will, um, that's where the coordinate will be. So all of these uh, primitives are unique edges. Okay. And then basically the centroid right there will be where the, the position is stored. The lens flare. You could hide a lot of, uh, it helps, it not only makes it like more natural, but, but yeah, it does help um, confuse people. <laughs> confuse the eye and give you, gives you a chance to, to loop things. So now instead of P, I can use rest here. And this should, I'm, I'm hoping, give me a little bit better results. So like the noise won't get stuck or it will be stuck and it won't be like swimming through it. So before 
these might have expanded, but then they got out of the, the noise um, expansion region, and then they stopped. But you would see now it's working a little bit. Uh, it's more like stable or, or consistent. Um, let's try maybe going to do a broader range. This is like more feathering between the two regions or whatever. It is kind of like popcorn. So I forget who it was, but there was like this, this uh, popcorn setup. Steve Investor, yeah. This is like an amazing one here that uh, this one was like fully rigged and, and animated and uh, deforming nicely or whatever. These little curls of pyro sim. Amazing. Yeah, I think even at the the end, uh, I don't know, there was like a, a super slow-mo portion of it as well. I think maybe it's just this first shot. But yeah, to see this, this whole like section there is super impressive. How the slice tool is working for flip, stitching tanks together, there's a lot of limitations. Uh, I haven't done a ton of work with the slice tool. Um, the only time I've used it was like for a river like if you have basically inflow and outflow, it makes a little bit more sense. But I have never gotten like that good of interaction between the like other than one way, like in and out, um, like a shared back and forth uh, exchange. I haven't had the, the best of luck with it. All right, I'm, I'm going to get back to this a little bit. So we'll go maybe higher. Um, maybe multiply this um, by three, get like a higher frequency. Ooh, this is more like the bubbles, we boil, <laughs> boil him like little uh, fungi or something like that. Um, so let's see, maybe more stretch stiffness and bend stiffness. Looking a little bit better. Pretty cool. Do you want to get caught up? We'll do another uh, update to the file. And maybe try this on some other geometries. The box. You guys ever hear that song? The Box. We're just adding some edge detail. Or maybe this should be a little bit bigger. I'm just making it bigger because that will change like the way that the, the noise uh, patterns and stuff is working. Roddy Rich, I think. <laughs> I forget. Uh, forget the name of the artist. I I think it sounds it sounds right. Coronavirus. <laughs> it's the mutation. This is this is almost like a uh, a viral load. This is certainly a mutation. I don't know. Maybe the sphere is still better, a little bit better. Uh, 
and um, just trying some different pressure constraints or whatever. I don't know about sometimes I like really I'm already like topped out at the limit, but sometimes I'll still make that a higher uh, stiffness or whatever. This is starting to be pretty cool. Might be too high of a resolution right now. Um, try just messing with this. Uh, changing the, the input and output range of the noise a little bit. Whoa. Noise in a wrangle. <laughs> I started getting, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit easier for me just to adjust them quickly. <laughs> I used to do more of this stuff in the, the uh, VOPs, but it became too much clicking of like going in and out, if that makes sense. Like I was always too lazy to promote parameters or whatever. If you're layering lots of noise for like compositing stuff, um, like trying to make textures, I, th I still use VOPs. I think it's really good. But just for somewhat simple like modulations, uh, I'll, I'll like to use it for this a little bit. Uh, it's definitely harder to layer and, and, and uh, visualize like mixing and matching and, and multiplying of, of noises in, in Wranglers. So I was trying to lower frequency here. It was just like changing some different. Uh... Was that you that made them? I saw someone on Twitter. They made like an interactive code generator that had the, the wrangles. They would set up like a, it would generate the VEX code for you. So I don't know, maybe. Maybe this is looking a little bit better. Ooh. So I went to just to like, this is 101% now. This is like a super slow mutation. Uh, you can offset it. I don't know, I, I have a feeling it's gonna, originally I wasn't using this rest and it, I'll just add. Uh, scroll this noise up in Y over time. I feel like it, when it was like swimming, maybe with the super slow mutation, it might, uh, might be cool. So, but, so basically I'm going from one to 110% or 101%. So it's either 100% or 101%. Uh, so there's nothing that's ever gonna make them smaller. So I feel like if you shift your noise around too much, like it just, uh, loses the contrast, like everything becomes a little bit amorphous. It's a, it's a cool effect, but I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to get some interesting um, um, kind of wrinkling 
and stuff like that. So I'm trying to preserve a lot of contrast from like the expanded and unexpanded region, if, if that makes sense. Just go back to like two right there. I feel like with this density, you make it a bigger number, you'll get, you sh should get a little bit more wrinkles. Like any time I've done something very little, I feel like that's you're making like a, a rubber or like a more uh, stiffer plastic. But for like a silk or a tissue or something like that, maybe we'll try 2.5. And I'm going to go higher uh, resolution. Steve GH, good to see you. <laughs> How's that 3090 working out? All right, we'll do, um, got two of them. You're the one hoarding them all. This is why no one was able to, uh, oh, you're, you're farming. <laughs> You're mining the, the, the tokens. The coin lord. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm getting a little bit of uh, wrinkling stuff now. It's starting to look cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, messing around with with all sorts of aspects of their their marketing launch or whatever but yeah that that was the main push of uh what <laughs> eventually consumed all of all of my time um i'm just gonna save this again you guys could get caught up if you're uh just joining or anything like that um so yeah we're getting a some nice wrinkling with the cloth i'm using some some noises and things to get like certain areas expanding uh, faster than others i don't know if maybe we want to set like a limit so stuff doesn't get too big we're starting with a rest length so i guess you it keeps the original with this rest length a ridge which is nice. Let's take a look at these results. So if we look at rest length, rest length of the ridge right here. Where did they go? Here's some that are, are growing. He's back. <laughs> Masawi, good to see you. Finally back. So we're, we're expanding these edge uh, rest lengths to get some, some nice bubbles. I'm thinking we might want to cap it at a certain point. Um, let's do... the minimum function this uses the lower value of the two arguments or the two uh, variables or, or uh, attributes that you feed it so if you say the current rest length or the rest length a ridge times 
we'll see if that works. So this should stop any edge or, or rest length from getting bigger than 120%. Mr. Wazoo, <laughs> the, the morning, Friday morning. So I might have capped it off at too, too low of a range here. We maybe do, let's, let's let it get two times, two, 220%. <laughs> so this is starting to be a little bit better. Maybe five. Yeah, I think this is stopping things from getting like absurdly long, kind of breaking the sim. It's like a uh, broccoli. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of some other things, like maybe pinning or, or slowing down the other areas so it doesn't move as much could be cool. Um, I'm just going to keep messing around with this for a little bit. Whoa. Might have made these edges too long. Maybe just leave this back at one. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so of course, after the simulation as well, um, you can smooth out or kind of like make the detail uh, a little bit more visible if you do this subdivide. And I think if you're starting with triangles here, you don't want to do this Camel Clark. You want to go to loop. So that will just keep making triangles. What an awful moment. <laughs> yeah, you could really go with a, a, a fungi um, type of, of approach. I feel like even as well, like this is almost like the, uh, just like a red, the classic red white mushroom. It's kind of like these little white spores that uh, poof out a little bit, like develop over time. Boom. <laughs> But yeah, this subdivide you kind of like bring out a little bit more of the detail. Um, sometimes if you see these artifacts there, maybe you want to do a first sight in the morning. <laughs> it's like you left the, the milk out or something. So I don't know. You lose. It's like a balance, I think, of of this to try to keep some of the detail but that's usually my uh, post post processing tricks or whatever to enhance the simulation um, maybe let's go up to a hundred do you add a vellum post process I don't use the vellum post process unless I'm doing a lot of things with the, the welds or um, specific things like that. So this, this <laughs> except my octopus teacher. So <laughs> inside of this, you can look at it like they, I, I, the welds stuff that they're doing here is like super fancy. I've never figured out how to, I, I never take the time to do that myself. Um, but a lot of this other stuff is just very simple wrangles or whatever. Um, like the blur is like the same thing that I'm kind of doing. So I, I don't always use this unless I really need it. Um, 
usually I'll try to, to work without these and just visualize this process a little bit better. Like, you could customize it more, I guess, if you do the custom weight attribute. Um, you might only want to blur or, or smooth certain areas. So I'm letting this cook a little bit. Um, so if you really wanted to, like, you could do some crazy stuff with a measure, maybe. Look at the um, area, curvature, curvedness. Let's go to points, principle. mean maybe with this moker <laughs> yes it's been a few <laughs> several months but yeah I'm, I'm hoping to get back into things here um so yeah if we look at this we could just call this i don't know we could leave it at weight maybe or, or curvature um where did it go Get rid of this pin. Curvature. So we have some negative numbers, but um, so I'm using it there. So like, that's one reason you might want to use this custom workflow or whatever. Like here, uh, the smooth, they haven't exposed the ability to do like a uh, spatial um, control over it or whatever, like custom. But if you wanted to do some special like curvature based smoothing, whoa. <laughs> I, I think with the negative numbers and stuff like that, I've, I've made uh, an artifact, some, <laughs> some relics. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that would be one reason you might wanna do that. Uh, yeah, for my main job, I'm currently working remotely. Yeah, but for the, I mean, the stream, um, the box and everything, like this is all local, uh, a local session, a little LAN party. All right, so just ease back on this. I wanna preserve these. Uh, this is like the kind of wrinkles I was interested in, in trying to get. Uh, I'm in San Francisco. This is like same time zone as as uh, Vancouver, Pacific. All right, let's sh let's move into some rendering. Bum, bum, bum. I usually work with this thirty six aperture. This is like a SLR, a DSLR, or a, a full frame uh, sensor. And then these focal lengths here make a little bit more sense. Like it, this is actually like a 75 millimeter uh, lens. Um, it's like, uh, it might be somewhat proprietary stuff that I'm using for remote work, but I, I don't think I can talk about it too much. For personal use, I have used uh, Team Viewer. You, you can't use it for like commercial, or you need to pay more for a commercial license. Um, with Parsec, unfortunately, it doesn't work, right? I, I haven't looked into it recently, but I don't think that they support Linux as a uh, broadcaster. Is that <laughs> default aperture value anything? I, I think they just made it up. I don't, it's a really weird uh, specific number for them to have assigned, but <laughs> I, I don't know what it would, uh, I don't know what it would be. Okay. It's, it's Kim Davidson. <laughs> they just uh, dropped like a book on the keyboard and, and uh, went with it. Teradici. <laughs> Someone just typed it in. All right. Do the redshift builder. Boom, assigned it. Um, there's also the, this cool stuff redshift started doing. They did the viewport IPR. It's really cool. 
Yeah, they they try to explain it at some place here. Um, I think that I remember reading this a long time ago, but I think they basically say that it's not based off of a real camera or something like that. I don't know why they put this in the guru level. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what camera or what type of film they're trying to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just leave it here at thirty six, and that should match like your, uh, your DSLR pretty closely. Um, so yeah, we have that. Do the, maybe just start with a. HDRI, the dome light. Um, so I just have my HDRIs here in a folder. A lot of them you could find from that HDRI Haven website. This uh, this one, this outdoor one or whatever. Uh, so if we do viewport IPR, we just click it give it a second, then the Redshift will just do the render right in the, the thing like that, which is really cool. Um, you might need a, a somewhat newer version of Redshift. I'm using 3.0.44 here, but um, it's really cool. So you, originally they were making people use um, the USD or the, the tops, the stage context, but now with this Viewport IPR, they, they made really nice upgrades to it, and you can see it just in the viewport like that, which is nice. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when they did it, but I, I think it was in the la within the last month. Um, it's just really, really cool to be able to work this quickly now. Volume improvements listed, but not being worked on. Sometimes if you go into the um, devs, developer uh, sub forums or whatever, you could ask, try to lobby them to, <laughs> to, to fix some of the volume stuff. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna try to do here. This is kind of cool with like an airbag type of vibe. Um, but yeah, this, so this is really cool where you can just go in and uh, Sometimes if you want to turn it off, I think you just click it again. So you can use this to make a RS light, just holding control and clicking. You go back into the viewport IPR um, and just see things that way, which is pretty cool. Volume scattering and filtering. Yeah, I think even like so the scattering is multiple bounces. Like a lot of it is, uh, they don't even, I think they still don't even let you do the phase, right? Like forward or backward scattering. Which is kind of a uh, sad, <laughs> sad type of thing. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice as a really quick way to render volumes, but Mantra is still pretty fast and um, you can definitely like customize it uh, crazy. So maybe I'll try to add another. Yeah, so with this viewport IPR, you can like tumble around everything and it's it updates, it's really nice. Let's do another light. I think it's adding it. Might be a little bit buggy, maybe. Alkama, good to see you again. I'm back. I might be frozen. Did it freeze? Redshift RT. Um, that's that's supposed to be more like uh, um, octane 
has one or it's almost like Unreal Engine or something like that. Um, it might not be like 60 frames per second, but they're trying to give you much quicker um, rendering where it might not be like full ray tracing for, for every aspect of it. Um, but it's all, it should be like very close to real time. So I'll just do this. Try to get it. All right. Let's just do manual. And, and I, I always remember it because it's like never cook or dash n. So usually after a crash, I'll, I'll put it uh, so it doesn't, it, sometimes if you do like a bad node, um, like a super high voxel count or something like that, it will uh, just open and crash immediately again or whatever. So I do it like that. Okay. So it's, Resimulating. Set up this vellum sim to do like a bubbly type of uh, stretching edges and stuff like that. Um, maybe I'll. I don't know. I was using the Redshift art uh, viewport. Uh, I almost said RT. I was using the Redshift viewport stuff, but it might be a little bit buggy. I don't know. Just go back to the regular. You do a lot of local prototyping? Um, I don't know with working, it's definitely depends on your workflow. Um, I have this flipbook to MP4 thing that I've been doing. And sometimes when I work remotely, like if you can mount the drive of the remote computer, then you can get really good feedback and stuff. Um, so like uh, I'll, make a bunch of quick times of flipbooks. So if you're deving or iterating, like if you're really worried about timing of your, your effect, um, then this can, can help with the, with the working kind of that way. Does that make sense? <laughs> a really weird noise. It might be, it might be, uh, I don't know. I have some computer fans. Um, but yeah, if, I mean, even if you're doing OpenCL, like you could, you should be able to generate flipbooks really quickly. Um, so I'll usually do that and just save a bunch of, of tries or, or things. And then I have scripts running that will make uh, a copy of the Houdini scene with each of these different settings. So if I want to go and launch I have different snapshots or different hip files or whatever. So that's, I don't know if I'm ever working remotely or on a computer where I can't get like accurate timing or, or color settings or stuff, I'll usually work that way. All right. So I was trying to add another light. The red shift was kind of crashing. Let's see if I can do it again now. There it is, it's working. <laughs> okay. Maybe make this one bigger. Ooh. It's like a, a luxury. <laughs> it's like a Prada Gucci. So yeah, I don't know, I'm using this iron. Let me also go into my redshift and uh, we'll do this as, um, IPR, SOP level updates. The coil wine. I might have to go back and look at the, let me try, uh, did it, did it fix it? 
Ah, <laughs> sorry about that. I don't know. I might have had a, uh, there might have been an advertisement or something <laughs> playing on the, the thing. I don't know what it would have been. I, I need to still look into my, uh, my settings here. Ghost in the machine. All right, go back. Plastic. just think about these highlights the coding it's the Houdini <laughs> the spirits Look at that. Candy apple. Yeah, so I don't know. I haven't really um, figured out what type of material I want this to be. This uh, refraction can really break things. Sometimes you can use it for like a subsurface type of effect, but can be. Uh, I'm not using Asus. I, I tend not to use it unless I really like specifically need it. Um, I th I feel like either using a LUT or um, just this photographic. You do like tone mapping and stuff with this. Um, I, I, unless you're really having a problem with your, your color gamut or whatever, um, I'll tend not to, to use it for, for everything. All right. Let's just go back to, uh, yeah, the ASUS for, for, um, the new uh, pyro ramps and all that stuff, it works really well. Like making sure your fire is very difficult to get it to like burn out, f go from like uh, red overexposed and, and uh, not like turn to yellow or green. Like ASUS is, is super useful for that. Deep ocean. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, getting to be more like a coral or uh, an enemy or something like that. I'm just trying to reduce this range. Ooh, too big. All right, we'll go maybe. Uh, I'm, d I'm starting to run, run out of time. I think I just have like 10 or 15 minutes left. We'll try to play around with this stuff quickly. Just got here. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I've, I've tried to set up a better routine um, to give people more notice as well. But yeah, just squeezing one in right now before, uh, before work. I'm starting to run out of time. It's like a gel, a gelatin, <laughs> used gum. Let's go uh, see what it looks like. Outdoor light, it's pretty cool. I think this one might be too bright. This one, maybe we want this to be our primary light. First light. Try to get like highlights up there. You find some nice 
Ooh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, you could almost do it with um, like an x-ray shader or so, some Fresnel or something like that. You could do like, um, I don't know, you put something inside of it with a VDB or, or volume or something. I don't know how they're getting that nice. It's like some refraction on that. With this jade, you have to be careful because it will, the default I IOR will be like a little bit weird. this should be seen through it, right? Ah, that subsurface stuff messes it up. Sometimes you can get it with like I don't know if this is the proper way to do it, but sometimes I've done it like this. If you just want a little bit of uh, translucency. They took, <laughs> they, they uh, captured me. So yeah, you can get some, um, interesting like internal stuff let's try it's gonna be our just made the null to get like an output we'll do another object merge and we'll do uh get that so this one here is going to be like our internal one just deflate it a little bit. Wow. <laughs> it's like a little too much. Yeah, you could get a similar result with um, just the turbulence or like the, the uh, noise that blows the smoke outwards. Ooh. So now we have this layer. Do you ever do a video on that? Yes, I think it's on uh, YouTube. It's definitely on my Vimeo. Um, I think the audio had some issues with it and stuff. I did it a long time ago. Um, but you can find it here. There's some, it's like a super old one. Um, the Vimeo is every month, the Vimeo uh, website gets worse and worse. <laughs> it might not even be working right now. But yeah, I, I showed it a little bit there. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna try a few things with this. Yeah, the Vimeo used to be really nice and like ad free and stuff like that. But I think someone else like bought it and it's just been getting worse and worse every single. Uh, it's like every month or every every day it gets worse and worse. All right, so I'm trying to. Put a. Uh, particles kind of, or, or spheres inside of this thing. The video quality, I, I guess, but I mean, even the player now is pretty trash. Like you could rip videos from it and 
that might be the most useful aspect, but other than that, it's just not that good. All right, so I'm just gonna pack this, turn that on. We want this to be uh, like that. Got little uh, polka dots. <laughs> little, uh, where did that go? This is not really in here. This is more like, um, just like a more uniform gas. We could just split off and do, do our own little thing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm gonna abandon this organic thing for right now and try to wrap wrap this up in like five minutes or so. I'll just go back to the um, minimal kind of style. Just get out of this like that. See our lights. try to get a little bit of this detail back. Sometimes if you just use this normal, go to, you can eliminate like the faceting look a little bit. Still see some of it there. All right, I'll just leave it like that. Plan schedule. I'm I'm still trying to figure it out, um, but I'm I'm hoping to get back into at least a more regular basis of everything. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't, uh, figured out like a reoccurring schedule yet. Hope not next year. Sometimes what I'll do with these lights, if you set like, um, just add these colors just for visualization, it helps. Um, so you can see which, which light is contributing which uh, to which like specular or whatever. Let's try to get one of these like a focused sliver. Turn down the uh, keep coming back. Uh, yeah, I, there's different content I've been planning to do. Um, one of them for sure is like some breakdowns or kind of walkthroughs of the um, gems, the the <laughs> the uh, plant-based stuff I've been doing with like kin effects. So I've been trying to document or go through some different stuff with that, but um, minting some <laughs> NFTs. Anyone in here is an NFT lord? NFT billionaire? 
Let's get back into light number two. It's like an interesting, oh. Let's get it smaller. that you ready to comp <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah i'm, I'm uh, running out of time quickly i'm just trying to, to do a uh, lots of tricks to make it look good at the last minute <laughs> it's the colgate sometimes what i've um what i've been thinking about doing is like using these lights like a just more traditional photography type of stuff so let's ooh, get that rim, that rim light. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm thinking even just maybe having them in the background like this could be, could be interesting. Three points <laughs> from downtown. Let's do, just get this edge straightened up a little bit. Um, I did, I, I got the Pfizer vaccine, um, the two, two doses, fully vaxxed. <laughs> I, I don't have time to get into NFTs. <laughs> I just have a few minutes left. I don't want to go into a big thing. Mainly because travel. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, the second dose was a doozy. <laughs> Knocked me out for a little bit, a couple of days. Um, but yeah, I, I would just hate to be sick and miss like two weeks. It really sets you behind in work and, and tons of stuff like that. So I figured it makes sense to... All right, so do this, I'll just mirror it on the other side. Flip it around a little bit. I think maybe if I just do 90 degrees. I'm working somewhat along an axis here. I don't know these other ones, I might have been skewed some stuff a little bit. That's still pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna put a texture on this and we'll get it close to wrapping things up. Do a texture. Um, so this texture can help you even get closer to like real photography. Um, I think I have like a soft box or something. Is this it? It's not the one I was thinking about. Um, I might have put it in a different directory here. I used to have like a card. It was just like a, a box light, soft box. It's like the race, race to the finish here. Let's get back into the uh, HGRI directory. I'm pretty sure I was putting them in here. Use IES on your lights. Uh, sometimes I use them. You found it. <laughs> yeah, I think that this looked familiar. I think this was where I was grabbing it from, right? Where did it go? 
plants, <laughs> they're still healthy. Thank you. Um, okay, yeah, here it is. Thank you very much, Steve. Put this in the texture, HDRI. Got to extract it. Where did it go? Oh man, it's a whole folder. All right. Working the most sloppily. <laughs> okay. Because that's what I was trying to do. Um, it should. I guess I just need to copy this color. Put it in the multiplier here. And then we're s somewhat back. Once you get the exposure lower. It's like a ton of work I was doing for <laughs> very little payoff, but you could kind of see it as like this little edge roll off. Uh, you can also work with the gamma, I think, and accentuate it. Um, but yeah, just getting a little bit of like natural stuff. That's all I was trying to do. It doesn't, it's difficult to tell, but it <laughs> it's worth it. Trust me. Okay. So we did it here and trying to think of the quickest way to uh, replicate this to the other light. Um, so I might just make a copy here and I'm just gonna yank these transform settings from the other light and then delete it. So we have that, we have, uh, oops paste the values, delete. It's pretty cool. I might just fiddle with the dimensions. It's kind of cool like that. I think it's nice having them in the background. See if I can get the uh, stuff straightened out. It's like a, a solid uh, crevice in the middle. <laughs> it's something. It's, uh, I feel like I should have gotten uh, into the shading and rendering phase of stuff quicker. Um, All right, oops, I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm gonna save this. I need to put it back into my streaming directory. Go up to version two. And we'll do a uh, very quick higher res. Simulation. I think my still had some artifacts, some triangles or whatever in there. So I'm just going to try to up res this. 
get rid of those artifacts, and that will be it for today. WTF Foundation. <laughs> Let's just go back to the headlight here. Yeah, I don't know if maybe I need a little bit more, uh, add more of the pressure. Where did it go? the hell happened here. Maybe it was the normals. <laughs> the Messiah, he's risen. He's risen indeed. So yeah, I think should have gotten rid of some of those, those artifacts and stuff like that. $50. This is like 0 0.0001 ETH, right? All right. So last thing I'm going to do is just move this white light, the primary light. Um, just try to get a better specular. Maybe having stuff from above. Where you been? CG Rockstar, good to see you again. Yeah, I've been busy with work. Been, uh, it was like a big push the, the last like three months or so. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get, trying to balance things out again. Get back into the, the routine. Yeah, I don't know this, this light here. Ooh, <laughs> it's too much. I think it's cooler when it's uh, skinnier or whatever. It's like it could be a, a trash bag or something like that. <laughs> Two hours. Yeah, I'm just wrapping up now. Um, I actually have to start work. But I'm, I'm trying to get back into it in the Discord. I'm going to be... Uh, Hopefully, checking in. I'll, I'll try to stop by your chat. You still been doing the automotive business? Questions as usual. Yeah, I feel bad. I, I've, I'm sorry I missed everyone's questions in the last few months in the Discord. But I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. Butting around. Let's try to keep it up the top. Just move the camera, zoom it out a little bit, maybe even 
Let's go back there. We have 55 millimeter. Boom. And uh, just play around with these. Two month away. <laughs> I, I think it might have been three months at least, or may, maybe even four months. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping to get back into it. All right, this is gonna be one more minute and then I've, I've gotta go. I'm gonna turn this light down. Yeah, I don't know. It could be cool. <laughs> it's a $50,000 NFT. Yeah, I, I think it'd be cooler too as an animation. I don't have time to to do it because it's like mutating or, or morphing or whatever. Um, could be a cool thing to do. Might pick this up in a little bit for a uh, just dial dial things in or, or do a little animation or something. Blake. Yeah, I saw that she was collaborating with Paris Hilton. Doing that she had that amazing like uh portrait. Like a CG portrait of the hair. So, uh, I almost have a, a, a long enough hair that matches that uh that character. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like a wide, uh, I'm gonna make a, a copy of this camera. I'm gonna go, boom. Let's see what this looks like in the cinematic universe. Well, sometimes these wide, uh, is better than the square crop or whatever. All right. Slightly yellow. It's going to be the last thing here. Uh, did it freeze? All right. Well, I, I'm trying to, I like them symmetrical, but you think adding some yellow? Boop. <laughs> Just a little bit. Ooh. This is, yeah, this is very nice. It's more, much more natural, I think. It feels more like um, heat. You bring in that last minute heat Ooh, I, I do like this. All right, very last thing here. Just adjusting the, the uh, specular roughness. With the eye, <laughs> from downtown. Yeah, I think it's kind of nice with this sharp, sharp highlights and stuff like that. <laughs> He's on fire. All right, we'll save this and we'll do a scene distribution. So you guys see where I got these light textures? Again, that was another gem from Steve. Um, you go to that HDRI Labs SIBL archive if you want to relink that texture. Uh, but yeah, you should have everything you need in that scene um maybe i don't know if i was to do one one more thing i'd add this bloom just feather it in a little bit help things look a little bit more photographic or whatever um so yeah that will be it for today <laughs>
for, for the session. Um,